I did want to address an issue here, especially with Chairman Stevens here, and I wanted to sort of set the record straight. I wrote an article in July on Class 2 gaming, and it's caused uh, a bit of uh, upset and offense to some, and I just wanted to address a couple points. I, I was going to make some notes and uh, uh, make sure I cover something, but I, I didn't do that. I, I just want to speak honestly with you. I want to speak from the heart and just explain uh, what my intentions were. Um, those people who know me in the industry and have worked with me and have interviewed know that I'm not a political person. I don't understand politics. I don't like politics and it's just not my cup of tea. So, so when I get into an area that has a lot of uh, political involvement and a lot of political things going on, it's, it's, it's beyond me. You know? So I'm not, I'm not politically motivated and I didn't do anything for any political motives. I'm a geek. I like to write about the technology and the math and that's sort of where I am. I'm no expert in Class 2 gaming. Um, we were going to do a series on Class 2 gaming. And what I started out to do was just write a very basic introductory article. View from 30,000 feet as I saw it. Again, remember, I'm sitting up in Canada and you know some of the intricacies I'm, I'm not familiar with and some of the political environment I'm not familiar with. Um, and I wanted to try and come out with some things that were in support of Class 2. Uh, for example, one of the things in there I wrote about uh, um, people coming into the Class 2 bingo facility and, and seeing a slot machine, and I, I put that in quotes and, you know, what it meant. And I used a couple of phrases that some people have asked me about. I said, it, you know, it's smoke and mirrors, it's a charade. But, but what I was referring to was this was for the people who would come into a Class 2 facility and say, well, that looks like a slot machine. I think it is a slot machine. That's not Class 2. And I wanted to say that... No, it isn't. There's bingo on it. Some of them you can have a bingo card and you don't have to see the reels. It says on it, you know, the reels are for amusement. And I, I put the, the statement, is that valid? And I said, yes, it is, because it is based on bingo. It's a bingo machine. So if you come in and you think it's a slot machine, well, that, that's smoke and mirrors. It's an animation. It's an aid. It's something to make the players have a different type of experience, perhaps some, some, some more um, entertainment, but it's bingo pure and simple. It's based on bingo, it plays on bingo, the bingo is right on there, you can see the card, you can see the patterns, if you go to the help screen, you can see the patterns. And my intention there was so that anyone said, well, it looks like a slot machine, that I could say, well, no, it isn't, and for these reasons, just, just generally, that. No, it's not. You're mistaken if you think it's a slot machine. It's, it's a bingo device. Uh, some of the, the terminology I wrote, when I, I wrote it, I had a specific uh, thought that I was doing, and I heard afterwards, uh, you know, that some people took great offense to it, and I reread the article, and then I saw, okay, you know, I see what you're saying. When I wrote it, I was writing this. How it came across, many people was different, and that's my fault as a writer. I didn't express it properly. One of the terms that I did there that, it, you know, I can understand where it's, it's not coming across as I intended, I said, you know, class two gaming should not exist. But what I was trying to say, and again, what I didn't say was class two gaming should not have had to exist. Nothing against class two gaming. In Canada, our native Canadians are referred to as First Nations in recognitions that they were the first people on the nation. They're sovereign. And I agree in tribal sovereignty. I agree in tribal gaming. My point, perhaps naively, and my point that certainly didn't really get clearly made, was I don't understand why there had to be this fight, this continual fight and negotiations to have class two gaming. I see Native Americans as sovereign. I think if they want to open a casino and call it a casino and put class three games in and put table games in, that's their right. So the whole class two area, we don't have that in Canada. You do have it in the United States. So my point was nothing disrespectful to the manufacturers, the operators, uh, the tribal leaders, any, any Native American uh, people. I didn't mean to offend, what I was trying to point out was my support for native sovereignty. I've always supported native sovereignty, I've always supported tribal gaming. I've attended five, I believe, out of the last six NIG Indian gaming conferences. I've spoken at each one of those, I've done math presentations and had uh, great reviews from it. My expertise is in technology. 
Well, my, my background, I was a systems uh, developer and systems technology programming. I like that stuff. Political side, I don't like that and I like to leave it to the people who do like it and who are good at it. So if I have offended anyone, I do truly apologize. That was not my intention. You know, I'm very sorry that that happened. I really did not go down that road trying to do that. I did not go down the road trying to say, you know, class two shouldn't exist, you shouldn't have it. I honestly meant, why should you have to settle? You are sovereign. I agree with that. I support it. I've always made that statement. Unfortunately, I didn't make that clear in this article. And for that, I do apologize. I am going to do a follow-up article on this. I'm going to involve some tribal members, tribal lawyers, regulators, people who have been there, who have fought for class two, who have fought for native rights, who know a lot more about the issues than I do, so that I can get the clear message across. And I want to make that clear in it that I do support native gaming. I do support tribal sovereignty 100%, both in Canada and the United States. That was my intention, so that if anyone looks at the article and says, hey, this guy's against class two, they'll understand, no, I'm not. In fact, I think that we should go even beyond class two. So once again, I'm, I'm sorry for the way it came out. I didn't intend it to do that. You know, I, I realized I didn't write it properly. It wasn't clear enough, and the ambiguity can be taken different ways. I do want to clarify the situation, and to the people that I respect, I want to make sure that you realize I am on your side, and uh, I just wanted to, to mention that right off the bat. Moving on to our panel. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought this was a casino promotions panel. <laughs> Uh, I think what I'll do is just ask our distinguished panelists to introduce themselves and uh, then we'll open it up for some opening comments if they have any uh, comments in the discussion they'd like to make and then we'll, we'll start with our, our uh, panel discussion. Thank you. I drew the uh, short straw and I'm sitting next to our, our leader here. <laughs> um, my name is Chris Corpy and I'm Vice President of Sales for Cadillac Jack. Christina Abate, Systems Product Manager for Ballet Technologies, working on our central determination products, such as Class 2 Gaming. Uh, my name is Mick Romer. I'm the Senior Vice President of Sales for Multimedia Games and part-time piano player for Peter Mead. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Russell Witt. I'm the Director of Gaming Compliance for Video Gaming Technologies. Good morning, I'm Norm DeRosier, the Executive Director of the Gaming Commission for the San Manuel Tribe. Thank you, and welcome everyone. Uh, I think first I'll just open up in a very general term and give everyone an opportunity to say uh, a couple minutes of just perhaps uh, their role in, in the Class 2 gaming industry and anything that they see that's uh, noteworthy in Class 2 that would uh, like to discuss. Thank you. Um, from my bio, you can read that I'm an ex-Sodak person. Um, I count that uh, those years with Sodak Gaming um, as the highlights of my gaming career. Uh, Sodak had a unique um, perspective and influence upon the growth of Indian gaming and the protection of tribal sovereignty. When I had the opportunity to go to work for Cadillac Jack, I took the job because most of our product placement is Class II. And I view, I view class two games and class two gaming as tribal sovereignty enforcement devices. Um, our company is in the business of creating product to help the tribes uh, grow their business without the use of class three when they choose not to use that option or have that option available to them. Uh, class two is a uh, mechanism for economic growth and, and uh, self-sufficiency for the tribal nations and uh, the business we're involved in um, is in partnership with the tribes and their ability to use those devices for that purpose. Lately, we are seeing a, a resurgence in growth in class two in many markets here in California, um, in um, Wisconsin, and um, even in Oklahoma, we see the, the ratio of class three versus class two now switching back toward a larger percentage of class two. And we're seeing the, um, 
the growth of um, the complexity of class two being able to meet the marketplace and that it's now a much more viable option for casinos uh, because its earnings potential and its ability to communicate with um, all systems and all um, bonusing modules of those systems, uh, we're now at an even playing field and we offer a product that's very competitive so that any operator can look at class two as a viable option for their casino. Well, I've worked with Valley Technologies for 10 years. I'm probably the junior person on this distinguished panel. But having worked in the Class II market extensively, the growth and the change of the gaming operators choosing to go with Class II technology versus a compacted Class III is incredible. Ten years ago, the vendors didn't talk together on systems. You couldn't have a standard ticketing system. You didn't offer player <coughs> rewards because every system was an island of operation. Over the past ten years, the vendors have worked together with the operators to provide SaaS communication in their games, allowing you to use the world-class systems available by vendors like Valley Technologies to offer common ticketing, um, improve operations through common accounting, uh, analyze your business better through common game or game performance data, as well as to offer your customers the same features that they might see in a Class Three casino for promotions and bonusing. So I think in the past 10 years, we've come an incredible distance, and I look forward to working with you guys for another 10 years, whether you are running a strict Class Two casino or you're looking to blend your floor. You have a Class Three property and you want to add Class Two games for it, for additional um, revenue. Good morning, everyone. Um, I may be the oldest guy on this panel, I'm not sure. I, I started with IGT in 80, 1984 and was fortunate enough to work with SODAC and um, saw the whole dawning of, of the Native American gaming experience, and, and I feel privileged to have been able to do that. Um, over that period of IGT and then uh, a period with Valley, um, I'm originally from Oklahoma, born and raised, Oklahoma State University. Uh, I am probably a small, a little bit of Choctaw, a little bit of uh, Cherokee, um, but I'm half Hungarian, so I guess I'm a little bit schizophrenic. Um, but as, as I joined Multimedia and I started to uh, consult with a good friend of mine, Gary Lobig, who is a, an icon in the industry, um, I was kind of amazed that uh, I had been disconnected from my roots in many ways. Uh, and to see, you know, to, to grow up in, in a state of Oklahoma where there were no casinos, there was uh, naturally uh, bingo, but, uh, and then come back and there's over 100 casinos and about 50 or 60,000 slot machines is it, quite a little bit of a change for me when I, when I go back. But um, over the years, over the 20 years, I have seen an incredible um, impact, a positive impact of what Native American gaming has done uh, for this country and for the people and the employees that work for it. Um, Ernie Stevens said something that really touched me today when he was talking about Native American gaming um, isn't about make, just making money. It is primarily about taking care of the people and staying in touch with those people and providing a community and also a, an underlying commitment and relationship with God. And that may sound a little bit strange, but it's not. It is that dedication to taking care of the family and the community. And that's what commercial gaming lacks. And that's why I think Native American gaming is so powerful in this country. Um, I, I think about Class Two, and with uh, Multimedia, who is really the inventor of Class Two in so many ways, um, and what that provided and how it has started to mature um, I, whether we you know, like the political nature of Class II or not, it is the nature of where we are. And we, uh, we have to embrace that and we have to fight for it and we have to make sure that we keep Class II alive every way that we can so that we can protect that sovereignty and, and protect the right of Native Americans to have these casinos. Um, sometimes you will, you know, we're doing a test for instance with Pechanga today where we have 76 class two games intermixed with uh, class three. Bally's in that, Cadillac Jack is in that test. And that's a very important test um, because um, mo a lot of people will say, well, a class two game can't be competitive with a class three. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, and I believe it's really because of, you know, 
of the lack of um, R&D investment into that particular kind of product to make it competitive. Um, there were reasons why that uh, money didn't go into the development for a while. <clears throat> Confusion over the rules, not sure whether it was going to still be around, not sure where the things were going to be dissolved. That has somewhat uh, cleared itself. And now you're starting to see companies like Bally and Cadillac Jack and Multimedia and, and others put more money into it. And I am fully confident that with that kind of R&D and investment and technological focus, we will make class two games just as good as class three. Um, there are ways to do that. It's, you know, they are random number generators. Um, there are bonus games to be played. There's, um, and I, so I expect over the next two or three years that you will see uh, a resurgence of class two. And it, I think that you'll see it just as competitive with class three games. And I think that's gonna help secure the future of Native American gaming. And multimedia is glad to be a part of that. We kind of lost our way a little bit over the, you know, a few years ago. We had got distracted with uh, foreign investments and, and Mexico and a few others. But with the help of our partners, uh, the Chickasaws and many, many others, um, we kind of got refocused and we understand uh, the need for that and we are fully dedicated to it. So um, thank you for having me on the panel. Uh, well, for the, uh, for the last several years, um, on the development of the tech standards and the mix and, and all these different panels and meetings and everything we've had, uh, you know, several of us up here and several in the room here, have, uh, we've been living, breathing, eating, you know, class two every day. Um, you know, and, you know, in an issue like when, 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 when John John Oracle came out, um, you know, there was a lot of people that, that took offense to that uh, in a way because, you know, Class two, you know, we, 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 you know, as a group, I mean, you know, the, the, the manufacturers and the tribes are vested in this together. You know, the technology has been developed between the manufacturers and the tribes together. Uh, some of the greatest technology that's in, the, in gaming today exists in class two. You know, class two invented server-based gaming. You know, there, there are some amazing technologies out there. Um, I, I would disagree a little bit. Um, that I think class two is as competitive or more competitive than class three games. Uh, I think that the, the way that Class two is resurging now with compact fees and, 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 and different things happening in different, in different areas of the country it is great that, you know, a lot of other tribes that don't have class two today are looking at it. Um, you know, from, from our standpoint with VGT, uh, we like to bring in a lot of tribes from other locations and bring them into a place like Oklahoma and let them see a gaming floor where there's 40 percent, you know, class two games, you know, intermingled with, with class three games and, and sometimes generating more revenue than the class three games and to, to physically show that to people because you can talk about this stuff all day. But you bring somebody to the Catoosa property of Cherokee, and you see that 40% of the floor is class two, and people look at that and they go, well, you know, how can you do this? You know, this is an inferior game, or all the misconceptions go away. Um, and, I, and I think, you know, it, it's our duty, you know, as, as manufacturers and, and, and leaders and experts in this to, to keep training. You know, when uh, I had a great, um, a great call with Tracy Burris after the, the article came out, and, and Tracy had a great take on this. I don't know if, if Tracy's in the room today, but, you know, Tracy said, you know, kind of shame on us as an industry you know, and, 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 our, and, and the experts here are saying that we thought we've, we've, we've talked to everybody, we thought we've trained everybody, we thought everybody knew about, you know, what, what we went through. You know, so, so I look at it as, you know, we need to continue to keep educating, keep training, keep, keep talking to tribes, keep showing them that class two is viable. Um, you know, this is, like we said, there's, there's a sense of community. Uh, you know, during the drafting of the regulations to have class two manufacturers and tribal leadership and attorneys and everybody come together to develop a set of standards, you know, for the betterment of Indian country, and that wouldn't happen in class three. You know, it, it, there's a different, there, there's a complete different sense. I, you know, I talk to tribes and I say, well, you know, what games do you have on your floor? You know, and they, they say, well, we're looking at yours and, you know, we'll recommend other companies. We'll recommend Multimedia. We'll recommend Rocket. And people kind of look at you cross-eyed. But, you know, for us, it's, it, it's, it's, it's that sense of community. There, there's a different sense, there's a different feel from the class two side, I think. And, uh, and you know, if, if you attended any of the panels yesterday, I mean, the, the focus yesterday was on class two. You know, we had three panels in there and they were very well attended. And in you know, one of the panels, we, we just tried to break through those misconceptions. I mean, I hear things every day that, you know, I don't know wh why people have these misconceptions, but, you know, that just shows we have to keep training. We've got to keep going out there and working every day to, you know, to, to, grow, to grow class two game. Good morning again. Uh, I, I'm the regulator on the panel, the token regulator here, I guess. 
Uh, I've worked with some of these folks uh, over the years. I've been in tribal regulation for about 18 years. And uh, my biggest challenge with these techno folks is to get them to dumb it down enough to where I can understand it without an interpreter on what's going on with these machines. Uh, but as some of you may know, my, I, I recently completed a three-year term as vice chairman of the National Land Gaming Commission. And I, I'd like to give a little regulatory perspective on what has happened in the last five years <clears throat> in class two from a regulatory side. I, I, and I don't think many people really fully appreciate this, but five, six years ago, as, as little as four years ago, there were no standards. There were no technical standards for class two gaming. Now, the, the, the result of that, the, the impact of that, uh, the, the, the atmosphere that was created by that was one where a manufacturer typically was left to his own devices and imagination on what he thought qualified as a class two gaming system. Uh, the, the regulator wasn't quite sure uh, because uh, everything that was manufactured was going to be subject to scrutiny by the NIGC or in some cases the, the DOJ picked up the, the ball and, and litigated, challenged whether it was class two or class three. And of course, the test labs didn't know what to test to. There were no standards to test to. And typically, most legitimate manufacturers were, were, were providing their product to NIGC for an analysis and a legal opinion as to whether it qualified as a class two system to be played in, in Indian country. Now, I don't need to tell you, if you're waiting on an analysis and opinion from the federal government, uh, that is going to bring the industry to a grinding halt. Uh, that's a very cumbersome, time-consuming process. And by the time I got to NIGC, I mean, we, we recognized the industry couldn't flourish. And so we embarked on the excruciating journey of developing some technical standards. And, and it was, as Russell said, a, a collaborative effort with, with some of the greatest legal, technical, or regulatory minds in the business that, that ended up with, with a set of technical standards. And even the biggest critics, <clears throat> I think throughout that process, I have since heard say, that's one of the greatest things that ever happened to class two gaming. Uh, and some will even go so far as say it legitimized class two gaming systems. But, but what it did was now you had some standards where a manufacturer knew what to build to, a lab knew what to test to, a regulator knew what was going to be acceptable as class two. And so all the stakeholders ended up with a, with a much clearer and expedited path to bring new products and new innovations and new technology into the class two world. So I, I, I think it's important to, to, to recognize that and, and I'm, I, I'm, I guess, proud to have been part of that process along with some, some of these great minds here and, and in the room uh, that, that developed those standards. Thank you. Um, I, I do agree, Russ, with one of your points about the sense of community. I've, I've done several in-house training sessions for, for several uh, uh, tribes where I've gone and, and taught mathematics and probabilities and all this sort of stuff. And I've always found any time I've, I've been working in a native facility that that comes through loud and clear. There is a sense of community and it feels more of a... Uh, friendly gathering and friendly meeting than a, than a corporate one and I've certainly have enjoyed working with with the tribal communities there and much more than uh, than any sort of uh, corporate settings so I really do agree with that I'd like to ask you a question what at this point what do you think uh, for any any tribe that has class 2 gaming uh, any who is considering opening up a, a class 2 bingo facility or perhaps um, considering a, a compacted class three, what, what do you think is the biggest challenge that they face right now? For me, my answer would be education, and I think that there is a lot that needs to be done in educating. Um, you know, I, I, I've learned that the hard way, 
And I think that, uh, you know, that's one area that I see is that there does need to be a lot of education onto uh, to class two gaming and, and tribal rights. But um, I'm sure we have uh, five different takes on what, what's important. I just thought I'd open that up to you. <clears throat> um, for anybody looking to expand or change their gaming, would um, be f to be fully educated on um, what's available to them. Um, I'm just still processing some of what my good friend Norm was talking about. And, um, class two gaming is regulated and enforced by tribal gaming uh, governments and individual tribal gaming agencies, bottom line. So from my perspective, the exercise we all went through for a couple of years, looking back through the pain of all that process, I know that some, in hindsight, can see some positives that came out of that. But small company, class two is basically comprised of very small companies who are struggling uh, sometimes, now in a um, challenging economy, to spend that money in R&D and game development to get those games to communicate with everybody's player tracking systems to provide the type of integration that's needed on a, on a, on a mainstream casino floor so that it doesn't look like a class two device and it blends in with everything else. And our focus was taken off of our priorities for a little while. And a lot of money and time was spent chasing after um, a goal that wasn't requested of us by our tribal partners. It was requested of us from um, a regulatory environment that wasn't initiated by our tribal friends. And we all got involved in it, and we all um, tried to influence the outcome of that. But I'm glad it's over, because there's a lot of R&D that needs to be spent to create the product necessary to be competitive and to help the tribal governments um, offer a product offering that can be competitive. And um, we're now seeing the resurgence of that in all of my, my fellow competitors and as we uh, develop new product and new, new game platforms and new integration with systems. So I think the main thing I would, I would offer to anybody looking to expand or introduce Class 2 is to, to see it from a completely different perspective than what it used to be. Uh, it's not the same set of companies. It's not the same set of technology. It's not the same set of product offerings. Um, what Class 2 Bingo used to offer versus what Class 2 Bingo now offers is an entirely different uh, set of circumstances. So look at it with a fresh set of eyes, and um, if it fits into your, your economic model, then uh, we're all here to help you. Um, I would say exactly what you had just said. If you are looking to open a new class two gaming operation, if you're looking to blend your class three floor with class three games, or if you're looking to get to that next level of operations in your existing class two property, challenge what you believed about class two gaming. Someone wrote recently <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> sorry. class two gaming was the most technologically and operationally messed up entities that there ever was. And 10 years ago, I think we all lived through a lot of pain, and, and we know that there were a lot of challenges with the gaming systems, with the integration, with the ability of the operators to get good balanced accounting. If you have to balance accounting from five separate vendors, or in the Cherokee's case, I remember at one time we had 11 different vendors on the floor. If you can imagine the drop team, the auditors, um, the game performance guys, how did they look at the numbers from all the different vendors individually and get a holistic view of their floor and how to improve performance? It was impossible. But as I said, in the te past 10 years, the environment has changed incredibly. So blow up the paradigm. Use the systems that are available to you today. Choose the games you want from the game vendors, the system you want that will provide your operation, accounting, performance, analysis, uh, bonusing opportunities, bring them together and then use that system. Don't fall back on, I've got to go audit five different systems when you've brought in a world-class system to use for those purposes. As a, as a manufacturer of class two and class three, um, we need your help. 
you know, um, if you look at the class two suppliers, um, some are smaller companies. There are certainly the larger players in it, but to keep it really alive, we need support. We, we need your feedback. We need to understand how to make the games better. Great ideas don't rarely come from within, uh, within the vendors. They come from the players and the, the people operating the games. You know, so if you have a, a total class three, four, think about mixing it. Try experiments, even if you don't necessarily get uh, the results. And, and uh, VGT is a, an example of a game that is off the charts in terms of how it earns in certain markets. Um, but it's not that way necessarily in, in every market. So you, you need to be more tolerant and to uh, maybe accept a little bit less earnings until we can, you know, we can provide the kind of product that can earn. Uh, and there are, you know, there are still examples in California. The, uh, the Gold Series is a great example of a game that's doing extremely well, Class 2 right in the middle of Class 3. We need, we need uh, more help from you to be uh, open and receptive and provide us kind of the opportunities to succeed. Um, and that's what's going to make us successful over the long run. If, if, you just, if everyone just runs to whatever the greatest game is today without thinking about what the future is, then we're probably selling ourselves short a little bit. Um, so help us with that, you know, um, and, and beat us up, push us, make us better, uh, demand from us excellence, uh, and I think you'll get it. I, I think from, um, you know, from, from my seat, um, working on the, the compliance side, and with the background I've had, you know, to, um, working to develop the regs and the mix, it's uh, to try to understand the mix and try to understand the regs and try to understand the grandfathering clause and fully compliant systems and all that, it, it, it's, it's daunting for a regulator that's never seen class two. So um, I'm going to touch on those points. I, I think it's, it's our duty to really kind of break, you know, break that stuff down for the regulators that you're working with so they really understand what it takes to, to grandfather a system and, 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 and how that process works and then, you know, what would be a fully compliant system, how do you do a modification. I mean, there's a lot of steps. It's very intricate. And if, you, if you're not around it all the time, it, it can be quite daunting and that could be, uh, that could be a deterrent you know, to some people. So I think as manufacturers, I mean, it's, it's really important to educate the regulators on that side because the, the more comfortable the regulators feel with the product, they understand how it works and they, they understand the different components that make up the system and what they actually do. Um, signaturing the devices in class two is a bit different than doing like a Cobatron on a class three game. Um, getting them comfortable with that, you know, showing them where the, where the files reside and how you do that type of stuff. You know, it, it, it's a little bit extra uh, work, but I mean, I, I think that, you know, that's our duty as manufacturers, again, to, you know, that sense of community to work together to, to empower the regulators and give them the knowledge that they need to really understand, you know, how that, how that works. And, you know, if you've never seen a class two device or, or, or worked with one before, you probably wouldn't know where to start. So um, if, you, if, you, if you work on that partnership, you know, with the manufacturer and the regulator, uh, you know, I, I definitely think you can see some, see some, uh, some really good results on that side. And, and, and it all begins and ends with the regulator. You know, so the regulator's comfortable with technology, you know, it's going to help out on the operation side. And I, you know, I mean, that's, that's my background. That's where I start. You know, if the, if the regulators are the ones that, you know, can go turn off your games, you know, I mean, you, you want to keep them happy, you want to give them all the information, and you want to train them and, you know, and, and make them successful. And if, if, you're, if you're good there, you'll be successful, I think, in, you know, in every other entity you have, you know, class two wise in your facility. Well, from a, a legal and regulatory perspective, I think, I think one of the challenges or a couple of challenges that the class two gaming and tribes may face in the future uh, are, are politically and economically based. In other words, uh, if, if these gaming systems look too nice and make too much money, then I think the states are going to want to challenge them as to whether they're legitimately class two or whether they ought to be compacted. And, and the, the federal government, Department of Justice, already tried that once. And I'll, I'll share with you, uh, the, the last time they tried it, uh, I read the legal opinion from the Department of Justice uh, challenging and defending the reason why these gaming systems were class three. And it said they're class three because they operate too quickly, they look too glitzy, and they're making too much money. Quote, that was the justification in the Department of Justice's 
legal opinion as to why these qualified as class three devices. And when I got done choking and laughing, uh, you know, I got kind of angry because there's not one single thing in the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act that defines class two as having to be slow, ugly, and can't make too much money. Uh, so I think, you know, that is, is going to be some of, the, some of the challenges that I think the Class 2 gaming will continue, especially as, it, as the innovations progress and it does become more and more attractive and more lucrative and more competitive. I think, I think that's where you might see some challenges. Thank you. Uh, the time is moving on along quickly and we're, we're getting close to the end. I'd like to open up to the audience, see if they have any uh, questions or comments. And first, I'd ask uh, Chairman Stevens if you have any, any comments you want to make first or any uh, questions. You know, I don't. Uh, I'm just taking it all in. And, and, and um, you know, I, I'm kind of come back to my old school statement. You know, I've said many times, I've told uh, my good friend Phil Hogan this many times, you know, when it comes to those machines, you know, my grandma, you know, she goes to them, looks at those machines, and she's, she wants to pull the slot machine, you know. She likes her class three. She wants to play bingo, she'll go to bingo hall, you know. And though some of that stuff is a little bit of a struggle for her. So, um, like, you know, nobody said they had to be slow and ugly. I don't know about that, all that. But, you know, we're just trying to do the best for our industry, protecting our right to game at all levels. And... Um, I really appreciate all the folks that are, you know, going to bat for Indian country and standing strong for us. And, um, you know, I, I really think that, you know, I don't disagree that our battles are ahead. Our battles are ahead. But I think we have a strong foundation and we have strong people going, going to bat for us. And I think that we're right. And, um, you know, we'll just keep fighting the fight. And, and uh, as I said this morning, you know, there's, uh, you know, everybody's got their their um, input. Everybody has their place in this in this uh, uh, battle, and I appreciate the acknowledgement that it's really about family, it's about community, it's about you know moving uh, communities forward. And so, and that you know, as you shouldn't probably shouldn't have gave me this mic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here she walked back and forth. You know, but the, the bottom line is is uh, you know what we're trying to do is help one another, and that's. And what I said before about the economy, you know, to telling America, welcome to our world, is we, we've always had, Indian country's always had a, a challenge. So many places out there that continue to have challenge in Indian country and some of these places we're talking about. Um, so I think it's really, you know, how we move forward. We wouldn't be able to survive what we've had to endure as Native people without helping each other. So I think it's... It's not, it's not an accident or a coincidence that we all end up in this, in this uh, challenge together and our impact and the statistics I shared with you this morning about the things we're doing uh, that stretches far beyond the reservation boundaries. You know, we've got a job to do and, and uh, you know, I wish there was a better picture, but I think in Indian gaming, there is a good, strong picture. We're holding our own, and we're going to keep getting stronger. And, and again, I attribute it to the industry. And you know, I thank everybody for all their hard work and support. Thank you, Chairman Stevens. Uh, I see a hand up at the back, and Sarah will bring the microphone to you. Literally. Literally don't need a microphone. <laughs> 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 I just wanted to thank you for clarifying some stuff on your article because we read it, our tribe, our commissioners, we are a class two facility. We can't get anything else at the time and doesn't look like it'll be anything else for a long time running. And without our class two facility, our health, education, all our community services would be null and void. So we depend on class two. And the other comment I'd like to mention, uh, the commission that Norm was on, they were smart enough to bring in some very expert IT personnel. And those IT personnel have been offering trainings. I've been to two of them and they're very good and they're very open if you don't agree with some of their stuff. <laughs> they're very open in taking in suggestions and they will research. 
So if any of you out there haven't heard that, they do offer that, and it's very informative. And as far as the federal government and slow bingo, they evidently hadn't been in a paper bingo hall playing speed bingo. <laughs> That's all. Thank you very much. And I agree, but not only do I feel that class two is important, I do believe it is your right as well. Thank you. And there's a question at the front, Sarah. <laughs> uh, hello, everybody. I'm Anthony Zamora. I'm the slot technical manager at Pachanga Resort and Casino. Um, we have uh, currently 216 Class 2 games on our floor, and you spoke a little bit about that and how uh, we're trying to bring all the vendors back in and introduce you in, uh, I guess, in the second chance perspective, you know, kind of way. Um, we did have the first rendition of Class 2 games, which uh, the security and uh, where it was at that time um, kind of ruined, I don't want to say ruined, but it tarnished and put a bad taste in everyone's mouth, and uh, it kind of is still plaguing and, and still uh, exists right now. Um, and part of that is when you mentioned the education of it, um, a lot of people that aren't technically inclined and, um, you know, when you start breaking things down, they still have that mentality of maybe, you know, you're trying to sell something to them that's going to break in the future and, you know, and with that too, I mean, we've had a number of issues with some of the Class 2 games. Um, I'm not going to mention any of them right now because I don't want to put you on the spot. But uh, with that too, there's a lot of inconsistencies with uh, California um, regulations, or not California, the, the 547 uh, regulation from the National Indian Game Commission. And on, across the board, everyone interprets it a little differently and along with the properties as well. And that's kind of where I'm getting at uh, with the class twos. I guess uh, there's just a lot of stuff that needs to get worked out and uh, I'd like to help um, anyone that has any questions and I'd like to meet with you guys personally too because I have some stuff that uh, needs to get hashed out. Okay, sorry to take up the time. Thank you, I'm getting this signal from the back of the room that we're out of, of time and uh, I just want to mention uh, one thing that, uh, you know, the participants have their own opinions. They're not necessarily those of, of myself or CM Magazine, but this is, this is a, a time for education. It's a time for everyone to be able to express their own ideas and own opinions. CEM and uh, Casino Fest is about education, um, educating in the gaming industry, and, and not only for the readers of, of the magazine, but also those of us involved in the magazine. I certainly do appreciate the feedback from people and the chance for, for myself to become more educated as it goes so that uh, I'm in a better position to, uh, to know the, the finer points that, that I may not be aware of. But we are about education. We do appreciate your feedback and your input and your contributions and that, that only helps us to get your message out stronger, better and, and more accurately. So thank you very much everyone, Chairman Stevens, for coming here and my distinguished panel.